very warm welcome to you and thank you for clicking on the Measurement Solutions VX model to SOLIDWORKS conversion video. This video is designed to demonstrate the capabilities of 3D scanning for reverse engineering applications. During this video we will walk through two sections, the first being the 3D scanning of a component and the second part of the video will cover the conversion of 3D scan data into a SOLIDWORKS CAD file. In this section we are 3D scanning a component consisting of some quite complex geometrical and surface based features. To achieve an accurate result, we are utilizing the HoneyScan Black from Creoform for this process. High quality scan data is one of the key aspects to achieving a good result when producing a cable. As you can see from the output, the system is capable of scanning at a very fast rate, around 1.3 million points per second, and the level of accuracy achieved on this component would be expected to be around 25 microns or less. As a highly polished machine surface, the Handy Scan Black has no problem scanning this part with any surface preparation. This is often the holy grail of 3D scanning, and with no surface or dulling spray, the Handy Scan is able to scan this part comfortably. As a handheld device, the Handy Scan uses photogrammetry targets to help and align its position in space, which in turn allows the user to move the component mid measurement. Capable of scanning small to large areas, the Handy Scan also offers direct mesh capability. No longer do you have to wait for lengthy global registration of point cloud data. To further help with the conversion in the next section, we will utilize some of the cleanup tools in the software, including automatic detection of the table surface, as you can see here. At the same time, we are going to use a command called isolated patch removal. This will help us clean up any data which is not associated with the main scan. The final step of our scan process is to finalize the data. This removes any targets associated to the part and creates our mesh file ready for VX model conversion. At this point, the user has the option to export the mesh into various polygonal format files. But for the next stage, we are now ready to create our parametric model. In this section of the video, we'll be utilizing VX model to convert our scan data into native CAD format. An important part of any reverse engineering process is to make sure we have the correct orientation associated with our part. To help achieve this process, we will be generating geometrical features that will be used to align our component. In this case, we are creating two planes and a cylinder. Now that we have created our entity features, we will use these to constrain our component. It is also here that we have the option to be able to flip the orientation of any of our axes. part is now orthographically aligned. With our part in the right corner system, we're now going to use some of the additional tools inside VX model to help us generate the features that we will use to bridge into SOLIDWORKS. Here you can see we're creating an external profile to give us the size and dimension of this part. With native transfer to SOLIDWORKS, it's important that if you're going to use this function that you have SOLIDWORKS installed on your machine. We do also have the option of exporting to IGES, STEP format and DXF. As you can see here, our data is now transferred into SOLIDWORKS. It's at this point that we can choose to use the existing sketch or template directly over the top of it. As you can see here, we have decided to actually use the template as a profile guide.
our sketch profile now completed, we're going to extrude this 20 millimeters. One of the significant benefits to VX model is the ability to switch backwards and forwards from VX model to your chosen CAD software. For this next part of the process, we're going to select additional data and send this across into SolidWorks. What we need to do now is figure out what the top surface looks like. To help with that, we're going to use a selection tolerance tool which will flood fill the data and stop when there is an extreme angle change. With our surface now created, we're going to send this data into SolidWorks. With our surface now fully integrated in SolidWorks, we're going to use the insert cut by surface command. This will allow us to trim the top of the surface and create our part profile. Now that the main body of our part is created, it's time to look at how we can extract some of those geometrical features. To start off with, we're going to use a cylinder-based entity. To help with our selection process, we're going to use a command called Select by Curvature. With our Quick Select tool, we can now generate our cylindrical base features. At the same time, we can also input design intent into our model. In this case, we are constraining the axes to the top surface and also changing the diameter to 6.2 millimeters. This will now form the default feature for many of the other hole positions that we are going to create on this part. With the PCD holes created, let's look at generating some of the additional geometrical features. The same commands are going to be used here, setting the diameter and axes constrained to the top plane. Now that we have shown you how to generate cylindrical base features, let's have a look at some of these additional holes. In this particular instance, the holes are not constrained to the top face, and so as such, we will let the axes run free. We will have a constraint in the diameter of 6.2 millimeters, and use this as a default setting for the rest of our hole positions. Last but not least, we'll grab the last two hole positions from this part. Again, using the same commands as before, constraining the diameter and locking the axes to the top face. As mentioned earlier in the video, we now have the option of sending additional data to our part tree. Using all of our cylinders, we're going to select them and transfer them into SOLIDWORKS. 
This will essentially create solid base features with inevitable diameters and axes within the SolidWorks part tree. From here, we'll be able to use some of the SolidWorks features to be able to intersect these hole positions with the main body of the part. As with most CAD softwares on the market, there are many different ways to get to the same position that we are at now. Let us know in the comments how you would have achieved this similar result. With the main part of our body created and the holes punched through the surface, let's go back into VX model where we will grab some additional information to use for our reverse engineering process. As before in the video, we're going to use the cross section command. By selecting the top plane, we have the ability to drag down the surface and create the cross section where we need it. This will help in creating a profile which we will use for trimming. One of the great things about combining VX model with SolidWorks is the ability to send information backwards and forwards. This means that if you want to grab some additional features, all you have to do is open up VX model, create the feature and add it to your part tree. With our sketch profile now in SolidWorks, let's look at using the template to create the corner pieces by doing an extrude cut. One of the great things about SolidWorks is the ability to be able to snap your data directly to other sketch profiles or features, as you can see us doing here. With the first corner created, let's have a look at some of the additional corner edges and other features that we have generated from our profile. Of course, at any point, don't forget that you have the ability to dimensionally lock and constrain your sketches in place.
our sketch profile now ready to extrude, the question is how deep do we need to extrude the cut? To help with this process, let's use VX model. By selecting the measurement tool, we can measure the two faces. We're looking for the dimension in the x-axis. With our model almost complete, one of the important steps to reverse engineering is to check that your model has not deviated too far away from the original scan data. Effectively, we can achieve this process in two ways. The first one would be to transfer the mesh data directly into SOLIDWORKS. Once inside SOLIDWORKS, our scan data will sit directly behind the model that we have created. This allows us to identify if there are any features that are out of position or features that require additional work. As an example, we're going to apply a chamfer to this whole position. At the current default setting of 10mm, we can see quite clearly that the chamfer is too large for the whole position. With a little further tweaking, we can work out that actually a 6mm chamfer is more suitable. The other method for comparing our CAD against the original scan data would be to export the CAD file and bring it back into VX model. To do this process, simply export your CAD model into IDRIS or STEP format. Within VX model, we will re import that CAD file into the software. CAD model now input it into the software and align directly on top of our scan data. Let's use the compare to CAD function to help do our deviation analysis. Color mapping a component is a great way of visualizing whether your CAD has deviated away from the original scan. In this case, our model is within 100 microns from the original scan data. This concludes our VX model to SOLIDWORKS walkthrough. If you liked the video and you want to see more content, please visit us at www.measurement-solutions.co.uk. Alternatively, please follow us on all our social media platforms, including Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Many thanks for watching.